middleware is a very cool plugin system within Django. If you ever find yourself doing the same thing for all requests in your application, then Django's middleware is the way to go. Here are some use cases of middleware. Logging of every request, extending request object in views, request response profiling. Although middleware might sound complex, in reality it's very simple, elegant and fun to work with. So, in this lesson we will have a look at Django's middleware. Let's start. Before processing your view, request in Django passes through additional layers of pre-processing. It looks like this. Each pair of colored layers is called middleware, and it has before and after part. Only after it processed before layers of each middleware, this one, this one, this one, it reaches your view. After Django processes your view, it passes in reverse order through after layers of each middleware. This one, this one, this one. Middleware is declared here, in settings file of Django project. If I would map this middleware back to our call for example, it will look like this. So if a middleware layer is declared first, then its before part will be called first and its last part will be called last. Let's have a look at a simple and yet practical example. I want to implement a request logger. I will implement it as a middleware. Here in my Django project I have an app land. And inside this app land I will create a file called middleware.py. You can name this file the way you want. However, it is a good practice to have descriptive names. Middleware can be any Python class with a constructor which takes exactly one argument, get response. And I need to save this uh, argument for later use. Besides this simple constructor, a middleware class must implement special function call, which takes a single argument request. And it is very important that inside this function I will make a special call, namely this one. And also I need to return the response object. Besides these simple requirements, your middleware is free to do anything you want. Django middleware specification is similar to WSGI specification. On Django lessons I have a pro screencast about WSGI. If you want and you have time, maybe you can have a look at it. Now I will import logging module, instantiate a logger instance and then inside this special call function I will log the request object. And then inside settings file I will add my middleware layer. So my middleware module was created inside land app and the class inside middleware module I named it request logger. And also in my dev.py I'll configure logging so that everything inside my land.middleware will be locked using this handler, which actually prints everything to console. And now let me start video store application. And you can see here method equals get and path equals with this one, which basically means that our middleware was called. Although this example is extremely simple, you may use it in real world applications. Let me explain what I mean. So in this output, this part is originating from our middleware. The other part, this one, they are coming from Django's built-in web server, run server command. In production, however, when you have debug equal false, there is no such thing as Django built-in web server. This means that by default your Django application in production won't be able to log requests. The job of logging your requests in production falls on web server shoulders. I mean on Apache, Nginx, GUnicorn or UWSGI. But if for some reason in production you want Django to log your requests, then you can use a simple middleware like the one I described in this lesson.
in theory part you saw that each middleware layer has a before and after part or pre-processing and post-processing. But in code it's not immediately obvious where are those parts are. Well, there's no separate function for them, but pre-processing happens here before get response function call and post-processing part is whatever is after this get response function. But you know what? Let me add quickly yet another middleware. So the first class will name it request logger1 and logger info will be before request logger1 and after request logger1. And I'll do similar thing for second request logger. From first re request logger I will remove the uh, logging of actual request object. Let me now declare both middleware classes in settings file and I will place second request logger somewhere here. What is important is that second request logger comes after the first one. And now let's have a look at log messages again. The before part of the first request logger is called first. Then it comes before part of second request logger. And then there comes after parts or post processing in reverse order. So there are two takeaway points. First, the the order of declaration of middleware class is important. And the second one is that pre-processing of request object happens before get response and post-processing or the lower layer of middleware happens after get response function call. Now you may say, wait a second. Each middleware is called once per request. But here in logs I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 requests and our middleware was invoked only once for get index here. What about 4 other requests? The full picture is this. On the left side is request response cycle in production environment. On the right side is the case where we run under run server command. Run server command adds one more special condition so to say for the request. Run server command starts a built-in web server that checks each request if that query is for static files because of the static prefix or no. And if that request is for static files, that is it has static prefix, then it bypasses entirely the middleware stack. In production environment, this special case is handled by real web server. This bypass of middleware for the sake of serving static files explains why from out of five requests our middleware was invoked only once. Before I complete this lesson, I want to highlight one important thing. Don't confuse middleware with context processors. Middleware is centered around request response cycle. If you extend a request object via middleware, it will have an impact on your views. Context processors, on the other hand, they extend context of your templates. So they are centered around templates. They operate in different realms, so to speak. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.